Hey, welcome back to Business 150, Introduction to Management. This is now our lecture number two in our series of What is Management? Just our introduction to the topic. And as you can see from this title slide, our topic today, the four functions of management. So we talk about management, there are four specific functions that we need to pay attention to. That's really the topic of this particular lecture. After this video, we hope that you will be able to define the overall management process. What is the big picture on the management process? We'll talk about that in this lecture as well as the next lecture, but we want you to get an idea of what the big overall management process is, as well as describe the four functions that managers typically perform. So let's climb right into it and see if at the end of this video, you can do both of those things. So you may remember at the end of the first lecture, we defined management as activities designed to achieve an organization's objectives by using its resources effectively and efficiently in a changing environment. Now, I will tell you, this is a very important definition. You should probably get this tattooed someplace, maybe on the upper arm or someplace on your leg, at least for this semester. So you always remember what the definition of management is. But in case you misplace it, here it is right here on this screen. Activities designed to achieve an organization's objectives. So remember, management happens in organizations, organizations that have goals and objectives they're trying to achieve. And management uses resources that the organization owns or can get, to get its hands on. And it uses those resources in particular ways, effectively and efficiently. We'll talk about that in another lecture, but I do want you to hang on to this definition of management. Now, in order to accomplish these things, management does certain activities does certain functions. And these functions are what we're looking at on this very next slide. The four managerial functions are, as you see here on this screen, planning and decision-making, organizing, controlling, and leading. So let's talk about these one at a time. Upper left-hand corner, planning and decision-making, setting the organization's goals and deciding how best to achieve them. Whereas organizing means determining how best to group different activities and resources. Leading is one of the functions that only has to do with one type of resource, and that's human resources. But you can see there, leading is motivating members of the organization to work in the best interests of the organization. And finally, the fourth function, controlling, monitoring and correcting ongoing activities to facilitate goal attainment. So those are the four functions of management. And you should know this way of looking at management is primarily four functions. It dates all the way back to the 1950s when we first started talking about and studying management in an academic university setting, right? So it goes all the way back. And while we have had some business books that have tried to talk about additional functions that management performs, really we keep getting back to these four managerial functions. So Let's take a close, closer look at them right now. Planning and decision-making, which involves a variety of things, including setting an organization's goals, deciding how best to achieve them, and therefore creating business strategy. We'll talk about that in a subsequent module later on this semester, as well as selecting a course of action from a set of alternatives right? Planning and decision-making naturally means you're going to make a decision to choose one option from perhaps several options. And part of the spirit of that, or part of the goal of that is to make wise, informed business decisions that are steeped in experience and wisdom that comes from learning how these things actually work in the business world. Right? But that's a quick way to understand planning and decision-making, these four descriptions. These are by no means comprehensive, but at least a way to describe the planning and decision-making functions uh, of management. We'll talk about this in more detail, of course, in further modules in this semester. The second big managerial function is organizing. You can see three different aspects of organizing here. From the top down, determining how activities and resources are to be grouped. And so 
one of the things that organizing does is prevent an organization from chaos from simply not knowing how your activities and resources are grouped and just everyone running around willy-nilly at random. Organization helps to bring order out of potential chaos or complexity. And it does that, in point two, by creating different departments and divisions to best support and provide structure and a framework and something that's repeatable and reliable and stable that employees as well as customers and clients and vendors and all those kinds of folks can count on from day to day, month to month, year to year. Finally, you can see here on the slide at least the third broad principle of organization, defining job roles and job specialization. We'll talk about that in, again, another module later on in the semester. But imagine an organization that never defined job roles or job specialization. And therefore, everyone tried to do all sorts of different things that maybe they didn't have any training for or any education in, right? That would be self-defeating. It would be chaos. Instead, what organizing does is define the roles within an organization and therefore, by the very nature of that, defining the characteristics you're looking to hire. So for instance, the reason why we have, for instance, an accounting department is because organization defines accounting as a separate function, which means you need to hire for your accounting department folks, candidates who are trained and educated in accounting in order to perfectly serve that role. Hopefully that makes sense to you. The third managerial function is leading or leadership. And as you can see, as we mentioned before, leadership really does with, uh, deals with only one resource class and that's human resources. You lead the people in your organization. And that means at least four things. Again, this list is descriptive. It's not a comprehensive definition of leadership. But leadership certainly includes, number one, getting members of the organization to work together to further the interests of the organization. Getting members of the organization to work together. You know, if you've ever dealt with folks trying to help them all row in the same direction and move in the same direction, that is no small thing, right? It's no small thing to get them to work together and cooperate well. Number two, motivating employees. Do you realize that presently, if we understand the statistics correctly, probably only one third of the American workforce is truly motivated to perform their jobs. That means two thirds of the American workforce are demoralized, disengaged, not really interested in giving their best. And so leadership is all about trying to motivate employees to bring their best self to work. Not an easy task. Along the way then, you can see there at point three, uniting employees, helping them to really move together, to see the same things, to see work the same way. And some of that involves point four, showing them the vision for where their company is going and where you all want it to be in the future. Those are very important aspects of leadership. It's by no means comprehensive, but you can see this in and of itself is a very, very significant role of management leadership of human resources. Finally, the fourth function of leadership, control. Control involves monitoring your actual performance and then point two, identifying what the organization's doing well and, well, what it needs to also improve on, what it's not doing so well. Control is that managerial function that delivers the chosen and appropriate level of quality of your products or services, whatever that you bring into the marketplace. And so while control may not be all of that spectacular or something you immediately think of as sensational and attractive, it's a very, very crucial role in management. It's a very crucial activity and function for actual managers to perform on an ongoing basis. Now, one of the things we would tell you, of course, is that managers don't simply do one of these functions. Managers will be involved in all four of these functions, and quite frankly, maybe they'll have to do more than one simultaneously at the same time. This is one of the things that makes real life management incredibly challenging and time consuming and all encompassing, and sometimes just a real huge nightmare. For young, especially for young managers who don't have the experience of navigating all of this work at the same time. Not an easy task, but at least you get the broad flavor for what it is that we're looking for managers to do. We're looking at them to plan, 
to make decisions, to organize, to lead other people, and to control the processes so that you can always be continually getting better. Now, we hope, as we said at the very beginning, that this video has helped you to define the overall management process and, just as importantly, to be able to describe the four functions that managers perform. That's what we hope you'll get out of this. And of course, we do think that if you have been following along with this video, I do think you'll get a good flavor for these four functions. This is indeed the way that the framework, the rubric for how this class will address topics throughout this semester. We'll actually use those four functions as the four big categories for how we order the topics and the chapters we look at in our text and follow along with these video lectures. Planning and decision making, organizing, leadership, control. This is then the fourfold way that managers manage organizations to be successful, to grow, and for their employees to be successful and grow as well in their careers. Hope that's helpful. We'll see you in the next lecture.